Hello DelphiCon 2021, my name is Alexander Serif and the topic of my talk is invoice generation via a telegram bot using fast support VCL and Delphi. Let's start. Today we will consider the following, creating a telegram bot with a menu, working with a telegram bot API in Delphi, generating invoices using fast report VCL in PDF format and uh, sending them uh, to the bot user. Now a little bit about me. I am a software developer in VCL development at uh, Fast Reports Incorporated. And uh, I am uh, invited uh, in uh, development uh, Fast Report VCL and uh, Fast Report uh, FMX. Why you should use Telegram? Reason number one, Telegram is fast growing messenger. Reason number two, fast bot creation. Reason number three, when uh, everything was uh, not working around recently, Telegram continued to work stably. Bots are 30 part applications that uh, run inside Telegram. User can interact uh, with uh, bot by sending them messages, comments and inline requests. The main creator of Telegram bots is Botfather. To create a Telegram bot you need uh, to write Botfather. To do this, uh, find uh, bot father in uh, Telegram search, choose it, uh, press uh, the start button, and the press the command uh, new bot. Next, uh, enter the name uh, consisting the bot. If the bot name uh, is not uh, occupied, uh, it will give uh, success. Confirm the name and uh, will we receive uh, a message with uh, Telegram bot access token. In order to go to our bot, uh, click on uh, its link and uh, click start. Uh, but since uh, we have uh, not yet created uh, an application uh, to communicate with the bot, uh, nothing uh, will happen. Conceptually, a Telegram bot is pretty simple. When a user interacts uh, with your bot uh, on Telegram, the bot API sends uh, details about the interaction uh, to your code our uh, HTTP request and uh, your code simply sends back details on how your bot uh, should respond. To work with uh, the Telegram bot uh, there are several options for using uh, webhooks or uh, long pooling. Uh, next consider th these options. To the webhooks, uh, you register uh, a URL uh, with uh, the Telegram bot API and uh, whenever uh, the bot API uh, has an update for you, which uh, is when uh, a user interacts uh, with your bot. Uh, it uh, when make uh, a re HTTP request uh, to the URL uh, containing uh, the update. Your application will be listening for requests uh, at the URL and uh, can respond uh, appropriately to incoming updates as uh, the rave. Your bot can receive uh, updates uh, either in a pull or push fashion to use uh, message passing technology. Under the pool model, uh, your bot's code, uh, your application uh, has to uh, contently ask uh, the bot API whether it uh, has any uh, new updates for you. To work with uh, Telegram bot API, uh, uh, there are libraries uh, and uh, various programming languages. Links to them are available on the site since the library for Delphi was not on this list. It was decided to write uh, the one and call it fast Lego. This library provides uh, the functional description on the Telegram website, uh, has documentation and uh, it's all available uh, in the repository on my GitHub with examples of its use. Next, uh, let's look uh, at the structure of uh, the bot. Uh, it uh, consisted of a bunch of uh, using various uh, libraries and modules uh, uh, such as uh, Fast Lego and uh, Fast Reports uh, VCL 
and uh, connection uh, to the database. To create a menu, you can use uh, an inline uh, keyboard markup or a replay keyboard markup. I used uh, the replay keyboard markup. The types of both uh, status were declared in the handler class uh, for state steps uh, was written. To save the invoice data, the in T invoice uh, data and uh, T invoice item classes uh, were written. This diagram shows uh, the transitions uh, between uh, the bot status uh, and uh, the steps of uh, the bot status. Depending uh, on the command passed uh, by the user to the bot. This diagram shows uh, the step uh, for new invoice and uh, add invoice item status uh, to request data from uh, the user. Next, consider the main uh, modules of uh, the application. If you order to work with the Telegram Bot API, uh, you need uh, to connect uh, the first Telegram modules. Next, uh, you need uh, to declare uh, the variables uh, of the bot, uh, sponsor, uh, keyboard, uh, current indexes uh, for state steps, uh, lists uh, of steps uh, for status, uh, and uh, objects uh, for saving invoice data. Uh, next, uh, there is uh, a procedure to create a replay keyboard markup uh, from uh, an uh, array of strings. Next, uh, there is a procedure for processing uh, using messages. Next is uh, the event uh, for the button uh, in with uh, the long pulling mechanism uh, uh, is uh, an audience uh, and uh, its uh, launch. When creating a form about object is created, indexes are reset and objects for saving invoice data are created. Next, a list of new invoice steps is created using the add function. We add the steps handlers with a description. Uh, a processing function, an uh, array of strings uh, for the keyboard, and uh, a reference uh, to the field of the invoice data object. Next, we do this uh, for all the menu steps. Next step, we have uh, also between uh, edit uh, for add uh, invoice item states. Next, uh, we add commands uh, start menu and uh, new invoice. Uh, the command uh, is added uh, using on command. We pass uh, the name uh, and handler of this uh, command there. Then there are more commands uh, back, uh, next, uh, yes and no, and uh, handlers. And we can also add the processing when uh, inputting other text. For example, uh, replacing uh, the names of buttons pressed uh, by the user with commands. And also when uh, inputting text and uh, the new invoice and uh, add invoice item states, uh, the handlers uh, responding uh, to the steps uh, are called. Next, consider create a database uh, to save invoice data. To save the invoice and uh, item data to standard uh, TFD memo table uh, components uh, were used, which were called uh, table invoice and uh, table uh, items. The invoice uh, data fields uh, were added uh, to table invoice using uh, fields editor. To do this, uh, right click new field. Next, enter a 
name, uh, select uh, the type and uh, size uh, and uh, click OK. The invoice items fields uh, were added uh, to table item. Next, a join between tables uh, was uh, configured. Uh, to do this, uh, we added uh, a data source uh, and assigned it a data set, a table invoice. Then, assign a master source, uh, data source one uh, for table uh, items and select uh, ID invoice uh, from uh, the list in uh, main uh, fields and uh, select uh, ID invoice uh, for index ID names. This is uh, how we will uh, set up uh, the connection between uh, the tables. To create uh, an invoice in PDF format, uh, we will use the fast report VCL. You can download uh, the free version uh, fast report VCL uh, via Git it Packet Manager. Uh, or buy uh, the extended version on uh, our website. There are link uh, to compare versions on uh, the slide. In order to use fast report, uh, you need uh, to add some components uh, such as uh, TFRX port. Next, uh, we need a component uh, to export to PDF format, uh, TFX uh, PDF export. Next, you need uh, to add uh, two components uh, for our tables. To do this, uh, we will use the two components uh, TFRX uh, DB dataset. Next, we will configure the first uh, connection uh, in the dataset property, select uh, table invoice, and uh, call it uh, table db. Next, uh, set up uh, the second uh, connection uh, in the dataset uh, property, uh, select uh, table items, and uh, call it uh, invoice items. Next, we will create and uh, configure a report template. Uh, to do this, uh, double click on this component and uh, the designer will open. In general, it uh, opens uh, with uh, an uh, empty page, but I have uh, already prepared the template and uh, now I will uh, tell you how. First, uh, you need uh, to select uh, the datasets. Uh, select box and uh, click OK. Next, you need to put uh, the band on uh, the page by sending them uh, in the menu. I put uh, the report title, master data, detail data, uh, header and footer, and uh, a few more master data and uh, page footer. Next, you need uh, to make uh, a connection of uh, bands and uh, add a set uh, by double clicking on the band uh, in the master data in uh, selected uh, invoice db for the detailed data band uh, i selected uh, invoice items next to display fields from uh, the data set uh, use the memo component uh, by placing it on the band and uh, selecting uh, the field or drag uh, the field uh, from uh, uh, the data tree uh, to the band. Next, uh, in the detail data, I put the invoice items fields uh, such as uh, description, quantity, the date, Amount is uh, calculated uh, multiplying uh, the quantity by date. Next, uh, in the footer, uh, the subtotal is calculated. Uh, the aggregate uh, function of sum is used uh, for this. Uh, the addition uh, of the multiplication uh, values uh, for the uh, detailed data band. 
Next, the discount is calculated. Uh, the subtotal is uh, divided uh, by 100 and uh, multiplied uh, by the discount. Next, uh, the tax uh, is calculated as uh, a subtotal minus uh, the discount uh, divided uh, by 100 and uh, multiplied by the tax. Total is calculated uh, is a subtotal uh, minus discount uh, uh, plus uh, tax and the plus uh, shopping. Next, we calculate balance due for this. We subtract uh, the amount paid uh, from total. But uh, in order from uh, it to come out uh, here, and to be calculated, uh, you need uh, to select data finish in the processing property and uh, from uh, access it. Also edit uh, to bands uh, for notice and uh, terms. And so edit uh, a memo to the page footer uh, with uh, the current page and uh, the total page of uh, pages. Next, in order to check uh, the correctness of the invoice information, you need uh, to add test data uh, using uh, edit dataset. I added an entry with uh, the 12 ID and entered uh, all the values uh, of the fields. For table items, uh, I create uh, two entries and uh, field uh, in uh, all the fields. Next, you need uh, to open uh, the designer and uh, I press uh, the preview. As you can see, all fields uh, were displayed currently. Amount, subtotal, discount, tax, shopping total uh, were also calculated. And notes and terms and uh, the page number we also displayed. Next, consider set up uh, a command to send uh, the invoice in PDF format uh, to the bot user. Next, when we create uh, the database and uh, configure all the connections with uh, first report uh, and uh, configure the template. We need uh, to add uh, a command uh, for the bot and uh, add event handler for it where the table is open and uh, writes uh, data about invoice and uh, items uh, to eat and then uh, for frx uh, port uh, we call prepare report method uh, and uh, configure the export to pdf uh, specify uh, the path of uh, export and uh, create uh, a folder and uh, to the export. Then we form uh, the keyboard and uh, the answer. And using uh, send document method, uh, we send uh, the file uh, to the bot user and uh, delete this file. Now let's launch uh, our bot uh, and uh, check its performance. As we can see, the bot uh, started, uh, turned uh, its uh, name and uh, launched the loan pooling mechanism. Open the bot and uh, enter the start command. Click menu. Click new invoice. Enter ID Next skip Enter fast report 
enter my name enter date enter payment terms next uh, enter date next enter any numbers and next click uh, new invoice number enter description enter quantity enter date and click yes and uh, description enter quantity enter date and uh, click now enter notes enter terms uh, next uh, enter discount 10 enter tax also 10 uh, next uh, edit uh, shopping next uh, edit uh, amount part and click uh, create invoice open the resulting invoice as we can see all the data has appeared two items have been uh, added all the uh, values uh, have been uh, calculated as we can see invoice uh, is formatted correctly thank you for listening to my talk you can find out more information uh, at uh, these links i am ready to answer your questions Sorry, I was uh, handling some other questions or another session here. Um, so I'm here now. You can uh, let's see. So there's a question here where the bot is running. Uh, I believe. It's running on the, well, let's see. Are you here, Alexandra? Or can you type an answer? Ah. Where, where's the bot running when the bot is running? I heard you for a second. But I think he's having some audio issues. Um, there will be a replay available. Uh, Brian's saying that he really yeah, prefers. Yeah, oh, there you are. Is this bot is running locate. Local, local, running local. 
right. it's both uh, using uh, uh, long pooling mechanism. Okay. Uh, this library is uh, still under development uh, and doesn't not implement uh, full functionality, but you can already use it to create simple bots. There was um, the other session we had. Uh, there was another session we had on um, Android smartwatches controlling IoT devices, and they used Telegram in there as well. Um, so if anybody wants to see some more Telegram use, check that one out too. Actually, I've seen quite a few people. I, Telegram, I use Telegram, I'm a big fan of Telegram. I get the impression it's more popular outside the United States than inside the United States, but there's no reason not to use it in the United States. It's a great platform. Uh, can you make use of the Teleform platform from a Delphi GUI app um, as well? So Rob's asking, does this mean Telegram runs a public web service that connects back to the local deployment with WebSockets? I think you said it's a long polling, so that means it's polling the the local app that the bot you wrote is polling the Telegram, right? Uh, it will be a little difficult for me to answer a question online, but I will be happy to answer your question in more detail in uh, your sent them uh, to me by mail. Okay, so do you want to put your email in the chat window, email address in the chat window, and I can share it out to everybody, and they can follow up with you via email? Uh, yes, uh, all right, uh, my mail uh, to the chat. Excellent. And you could also, you should be able to see the questions and type answers there as well. Uh, repeat, uh, please, your question. Uh, you should be able to see the uh, question log and you can type answers there as well. Uh. Mm. I, I put his uh, email address in the chat there. If you do have questions you want to follow up with him, you can feel free to send him an email. Uh, that'll be a lot easier for him to answer. Um, but thank you so much for the session. I am very interested. Like I said, I, I love Telegram. 
been wanting to play with the API and some bots and stuff, so I will definitely be checking this one out as well and experimenting with it too. So thank you, and thank you everybody for being on here, and uh, we'll see you online. Take care. Thank you.